Hello and welcome to this video on generating URLs in Flask. So here we have a homepage and there is a button that links to the dashboard page. And on the dashboard page, there is a link that links back to the homepage. Let's take a look at these in the template. So here we have the homepage and the link to the dashboard page is just a normal link with slash dashboard as the href. And on the dashboard page, we have a link which just goes to slash to go to the root of the URL, which is back to the home page. And if we look at our routes for this Flask app, we have the home page route and the dashboard route. And as you can see, the route for the home is just the root of the domain and the route for the dashboard is slash dashboard. So what if we were to change the dashboard to user dashboard, for example? Let's take a look at this in the browser and refresh. So here's the button for dashboard. It goes to slash dashboard, but that is now broken. That doesn't work. So what would have to do now is update this link to be user dashboard. Now, as your app gets larger and more complex, you might have many routes and many links to those routes throughout your templates. So there's an easier way to manage this. Instead of manually typing out the route, we can use something in Flask called URL4. And in this function, we will just pass in the name of the route we want to link to. So in this case, this will be dashboard. So what this represents is the name of the routes function. So just the word dashboard, not the actual path, but the name of the function. So if we save this, go back and refresh, this now goes to user dashboard because it looks up what the path is for that route. So let's do the same thing for the home link. On dashboard.html, let's change this to URL for, and this is home because the name of our home route is home. Let's test that out. So this goes to user dashboard and this goes to home. And if we change the path to user dashboard to something else entirely, we don't have to update our templates. This will just go to the correct place. So let's change that back to dashboard. Let's take a look at our base HTML file. And you can see we're linking to two style sheets and the path for each style sheet is written out starting from the root of the domain all the way through to the name of the file. This works in this example because our Flask app is running at the root of the domain. But if our Flask app was running in a subdirectory like this, for example, these would have to be updated. But we can get around this and make sure that URLs to assets always work by using URL4. So if we just type URL4 in here, and the first thing we want to pass in for static assets is static. And then the second thing is the file name. So let's copy this piece here and just paste in CSS slash normalize. So because this is a URL for a static asset, it knows to add static to the front of the file name and it will always go to the correct place no matter how your Flask app is set up. So let's refresh this and test. It is still loading that style sheet. Let's do the same thing for the main style sheet. So URL for a static asset and the file name is CSS slash styles dot CSS. Save that and refresh. And there we go. It still works. It's still linking to the style sheets, but we've made our URLs for those style sheets more resilient. One last thing I want to mention is that you can use this URL for function inside of Python files as well, not just inside templates. So if you wanted to use it here and say, get the URL for the homepage, 
you could just say home URL equals URL for home. Now, in order to use this in this Python file, we need to import it from Flask. So we'll just say from Flask import Flask render template and also URL for. So if we create this variable for the home URL, we can pass it into our dashboard template, just like that. And in our dashboard template, let's just output it here. And check it out in the browser. There we go, our home URL is just a forward slash because it's in the root. And that's how you use URL for within Python files as well. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.